Well, hello and welcome to the Car Care Not Shop. We have another LS460 today. It seems like we're becoming an LS shop slowly, which I don't mind. I love those cars, although I have warned you about them, that they can get expensive as they get older and the problems pile up. And today I'm going to show you a prime example of that. See, the previous LS460 we looked at, it had a coolant leak, nothing really major. It didn't have air suspension. It didn't have all the typical suspension stuff. This one, however, it has air suspension and it has all the suspension problems that come with that. Let's take a look at this car and I'll show you what we're doing to it first and then everything that is unfolding out of that. It's, um, it's the higher trim model that has air suspension, that has a lot of bells and whistles, have these nice chrome wheels. I don't know if these chrome wheels are original. If you are aware of that, you follow the exact trims or whatnot, let us know if these were original chrome or they were chromed after the fact. However, we look here, we're not really doing anything with the engine today, looking at the suspension. And this car has two major problems. Basically, when you go over a bump, there is not a noise or a knock. The best way to describe it is there is a symphony of sound and vibration and just the whole car feels like it's gonna fall apart. You leave it overnight, it leans in the back because one of the air shocks in the back is leaking. And the owner of this car has been having a lot of problems with the air suspension. Place the pump, this leaks, that leaks. And he's, he's getting to a point where he's drawing up a plan to move on from this car, but he needs a year or two out of it before he moves on. Burns a lot of oil, a lot of oil. I mean, when I started this morning, there was a noticeable puff of blue smoke from it. Burns a lot of oil. I don't think this car had a good life overall. Probably the previous owner didn't take care of it really. And this is the theme with these. The current owner is really trying his best, but it's getting a bit much. Let's talk a little bit about the Lexus LS air suspension, because a lot of people assume it is just like the Mercedes S-Class and the Airmatic. So if you look at the top of the strut right here, if you look, you won't see an airline because the airline actually connects to the side of the strut. What you will see, however, is this cap. And this has a little motor that goes into the strut. This changes the dampening of the strut itself. This is basically AVC, you can do find this. Lexus has been using this design and Toyota in a lot of models. Nothing really fancy about it. But before we lift this car up and show you the suspension, it's really bad on this one. Let me show you the conversion kit. So this is made by a similar company that makes the aromatic stuff, the Mercedes conversion kits. So it's basically a coil spring. And even though the manufacturer will tell you a lot of stuff that is gonna change the ride, it doesn't really ruin the ride like it does on Mercedes side because this car did come with coil springs. I mean, we have another LS460 here in the shop that has original coil springs. Rides like a cloud and it's beautiful. Unlike Mercedes, that the models that have air springs, especially like the S-Class, it never came with coil springs. Some models did, but that one didn't. So this is from Strut Masters. There is a lot, there's r not. there's a lot of kits here. Folks, let's lift this car and you'll see how bad the suspension is. Let's actually start in the rear. And I want to show you something. When you check a car's suspension, you're expecting to do this, do this, everything to be nice and solid. Now let's move to the front. And usually you expect the front to be like that too. But uh, watch this. What happens when we do this? That is a lot. <laughs> I mean, this is so bad. This is unbelievable how bad this is. And you're gonna see exactly why that is. We did the other side already. So if you come over on this side, we've just finished replacing everything on this side. Nice and solid, nothing. Everything you see, you see in the suspension 
is new. And let me tell you the story and show you actually the parts that came out of this. Like I told you, the owner wants two more years out of this car. So we went with a combination of parts. Some of them are original that you can't get aftermarket. Some of them are aftermarket. Remember, we only want these parts to last a year or two. So that was the plan because otherwise this bill, which is already enormous, would have been double. Let me show you some of the parts that we actually replaced off the car. So you can kind of get an idea of what's what. So you notice an enormous knuckle. That's because there is a ball joint right here on the knuckle, which is shot. On the other side, it is shot. On this side, it's actually it does have a little bit of play. But in order to get this ball joint, you have to replace a whole knuckle. That's just Lexus design. I am not comfortable pressing this out, pressing an aftermarket one in. I don't want to take that liability. That is just if, to if Lexus or Toyota decided this ball joint is non-serviceable, then that's for a good reason. And some of you will jump in the comments and say that I have an automotive repair shop, not do working on my own car here. I have to warranty this job. And the other thing that got replaced is the bearing. Good luck getting this bearing out of this. The reason for that is the bearing material is steel and this is aluminum. There is a chemical reaction that happens and oxidation between the two and you can kind of see it here that literally welds them together. By the time I get this bearing out, the speed sensor will be damaged, the bearing itself will be damaged, and it's no longer usable. So we actually had to replace the bearing. This is the air shock, which is a little bit leaky from the shock absorber side, not from the air suspension side, but one of the backs is leaking. But if you notice here, this is actually a KYB unit. So always you guys ask, what are the original suppliers? KYB right here. This is an original strut to air strut to this car. This is the other control arm. This is the lower front. And, and this car has four control arms. One of them is in the front. One of them is in the back lower. And you have two at the top, basically a dual wishbone setup. So this is one of the rears. Now the bushing on this one is starting to tear. If we're gonna get to this point, we might as well replace it. Really hard to see on camera, but it is torn, almost torn all the way through. Now this one is the uh, interesting one. So this is the lower rearward one. This is the one that your sway bar link sits on, your strut sits on, and then the big ball joint right here. So this one, for lack of a better word, that's all I'm gonna say about it. This bushing is completely gone. It's just done. Folks, this is supposed to be one unit. This bushing is supposed to be here, nice and secure. This is hardly secure. It's all over the place. That's one thing. And then this other bushing where the strut sits is also compressed and gone. This, is, this has a lot of play. So there's the other arm. And you notice they're all aluminum, most of them at least. Then we get to the top arms. There's left and right. These sits on the top and these connect right here on the knuckle. These are not as bad on this side. One of the ball joints, this one has a little bit of play. This one is okay. The bushings on this side are, this one is torn, this one is okay. But if we get to this point, just replace them because you're just gonna keep going back, forth, back, forth. Additionally to this car, the brakes vibrate so bad. So we're putting new brakes as well, new rotors, new pads, and inner and outer tie rods. They're also loose. This side is not as bad. This has a very little amount of play in this one. This one is good, but we're replacing it because the owner wanted it this way. This is all a collection of parts that came out of this car. And this is one side. We still have to do the other side, which all the parts are sitting here. There's kind of a combination of aftermarket and original parts here. Here is the original knuckle. This only comes original. You can't buy a knuckle aftermarket. This is an aftermarket wheel bearing, aftermarket pads, aftermarket inner and outer tie rods, which are actually waiting for an outer tie rod that we got ordered wrong. We got two left sides, we need a right side. This is wear sensor for the pa driver passenger side. Folks, something about Lexus wear sensors for the brakes. 
don't buy the originals because they're ridiculous. I mean, if you go to a Mercedes, BMW, all the Germans that use a, a brake wear, pad wear sensor, they're like 15 bucks. Lexus, $150. Why? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Either reuse the original if it's not damaged, or just buy an aftermarket one. This one is Beck and Arnley. Any part will do. The, the wear sensor is nothing but a tiny little pad. It'll only get contact when the brakes are worn down. It just breaks a little contact. It's not the part that's gonna cause issues. And at the bottom, we have one rotor, the rest of the control arms, but more importantly, this is the kit that's going to disable our air suspension. Because remember, you're going to leave those lines disconnected and they're just going to sit there. They're going to have warning messages. You're going to have all kinds of stuff. So this is the part of the kit that disables that. So you wouldn't have warning messages. So the pump wouldn't keep running and all this mess. Having said that, let's lift this car up all the way. Let's look at what, what's actually loose on that side and how you can perhaps check it on your RLS. So let's look at what's actually making all the movement and all the mess. So if you look, look at this bushing, I mean, I can already tell that this is all the way forward, but watch this. Look at that enormous movement here. And then I got more movement at the top because the tops are shot. This one is gone. I mean, there's so much going on here. And look at this. The strut bushing is completely out because once this gets loose, it creates so much abnormal movement that everything starts tearing and, and just falling apart. And on top of that, we have the air suspension problems. This is, this is how you let this get to this point where we're kind of, now the car is undrivable, basically. It's dangerous. I mean, this is, this is a lot of movie. You, you're not going to drive this on the highway and feel safe. It's going to be very dangerous. Waving left and right, any wind will push the car. And this is a big, heavy car. You do not want to drive with suspension that looks like this. Having said that, let's look at the rest of the car. Now, we know this engine burns a lot of oil. That is according to the owner. But looking around here, there's actually not a lot of leaks look around this is just a sloppy oil change this is, I'm not going to consider it as a leak rack and pinion looks good although we have a loose inner tie rod here we're going to replace that when we get to this side that side is already done moving back here I mean there is really nothing and I want to I want you to show me a German car in this age with this smiles with this complication that looks like this. I mean, if this car had good maintenance from day one, it wouldn't be burning oil. Of course, we talked about that in previous video, but there is nothing leaking here. If we look right here, this is where German cars favorite spot to leak. I've owned two German cars and they're both leaking from the rear main seal. That's just the way they are. But here we are. Germans, you have something to learn from the Japanese because I have no oil leaks, nothing. Rear main seal is good. Everything looks good. And then the Japanese have something to learn from the Germans, which has to do with rust. I mean, everything in the car is covered, so you're not going to have rust. But the exhaust just rots away. Mufflers are already gone in this. It's, the car is a little louder than usual. And this is something with these. If you end up with one of these that has exhaust leaks because of rust, things will get extremely expensive. The exhaust in the LS is very expensive, so be careful from rusty ones. But otherwise, I mean, this car is actually in great shape when you start looking past the stuff going on in the front. The rear suspension, I don't see any issues with, and this is something they're not very common for. They don't really have issues with the rear suspension other than the air shock, which we are replacing already. That's getting taken care of. Here is the rear differential. We don't have any leaks. Both of your axles are dry. Nothing really is leaking. Nothing is out of the ordinary. All the suspension here, as complicated as it looks, they're actually not that problematic like the front. The front on these seem to be a lot more problematic than the rear. But this is your LS. Like I told you folks, be careful with Lexus LS460s because 
you buy one of these sight unseen without really looking into it, just in between the front suspension and a coolant leak like the other one that we're looking at, and some odds and ends here, water pump leaking, some little stuff in these tires and brakes, you already totaled the car. By the way, if you go all original parts, be careful with these folks. These are great cars if you take care of them. They're really cool, they're really comfortable, but remember that they are technological masterpieces. Things are very expensive. The brakes on this car are just astronomical. And, and you add the sensor and you add everything to it. It's just, this is, you're not gonna buy this and expect Camry or Avalon type maintenance costs, or even GS maintenance costs, or ES maintenance costs on the Lexus side. This is in a class of its own, and things are gonna get expensive. They don't break often, but when they do, it's a car, things will happen. It's gonna get expensive. I mean, the owner of this car is spending almost $6,000 here. It's not, this, this, all this aftermarket stuff is expensive, because you're not replacing one arm. Each side has four arms, and the inners, and the outers, and the strut. All this combination of things to get to, just to drive it, because the suspension has fallen apart. Be careful with these, folks. And if you own one, now you've seen the common fail points. Don't worry too much about the rears. Don't be afraid to convert it to from air suspension if you've had a lot of problems. Don't just wake up one day and go, you know what, I'm just gonna convert it to regulars. There's no point. When the air suspension gives you trouble and it's not the first time, like let's say one shock leaks, okay, we well, can live with one shock, but is it gonna be one shock, then another, then another? That's when this becomes a problem. So that's when you wanna consider. And then the other thing is, is this a 2008? Because this is a 2008, it's a little old. And then the values go down. You're not gonna put a lot of money into this to, it won't make financial sense anymore. So this is where you want to think. How long are you keeping this car? What else does it need before you start the conversion? Because these conversion kits, they're not cheap. So when you check one of these, you want to look for two things that are very important. We talked about the air suspension, but other than that, this arm is what starts all the trouble with these. When this arm goes, it's going to start putting load on all of the other ball joints unnecessarily, and it's gonna destroy everything. If you just spot one of these, and this looks original, it has no issues, just has a few cracks, replace them if they are original. Because this is what destroys the suspension on these. It's really not the rest, it's this arm. Same thing, I own an S-Class, and you guys know about this, I am on my second one of these. Because this tears up, this has a lot of load, this is a very heavy car, and this, Singular arm, the rear one, always wears out prematurely. It's just the way these cars are, they're very heavy. The other thing is, the coolant leak, the, the valley coolant leak that we talked about from the other LS, that other LS, by the way, is still here. We're still battling that battle. That coolant leak, is the best way to describe it, is a can of worms. You go to fix the coolant leak, injector broke, then the connectors broke then this is not sitting right and this doesn't want to go and it just turns into that area is a high heat area everything plastic is worn everything is like brittle and just you touch it it breaks so you really got to spend time with it be careful with these cars folks and uh, other than that this owner is actually not done after we're done because this tire is completely destroyed he's gonna need new tire the other tire is okay but it's it's not it's not really in the best shape. It's gonna need tires soon. So you see how this adds up? Not the typical Camry Avalon experience now, is it? And folks, we'll film on this later because I had to show you this. So you look at this rotor. It has a little bit of rust here. Looks like a pad never touched this. And this is normal in Illinois, you know, cars that sit, whatnot. But it's anything but normal in this car. If you look at the pad right here, this one is sitting right here. There's a pin that goes through through the pad, through the other one, and out. Well, if you look at this pad, it's all the way down. And when I took the pin out, I'm like, huh, I didn't feel this drop. Well, this was actually whoever did the previous brakes. They pushed the pad too much down, put the pin on top of it, so this pad was just sitting there. Let me just show you one thing before we get here. Let's look, this is an old rotor. You notice this, this surface is straight. There's really no groove in it or anything. Now, 
let's look at the surface here. Folks, this is extremely dangerous. Whoever did this, please be careful next time because this is dangerous. You see that big groove right there? That is unbelievable. Look at the pad right here. The pad is touching the rotor. This is unbelievable that this is like that. This is just flat dangerous, folks. I mean, this pad is all the way down in there and it's not really held by the pin. It's held by the rotor, which it did chew up pretty, pretty good. Just thought I'd show you that. Very interesting uh, craftsmanship there, but hey, things happen. Good thing we're replacing it. We're gonna replace both pads and rotors. So uh, this is why you have that big groove right there. Pretty interesting. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day. <laughs>